Hello, uh, please mark your present in the session. If you are live and online, please say hi in the chat window. Okay, so I hope that we can start today's session. Um, log aaj ka session start kar sakte hain, if you guys are online and live. Great. So, uh, good, 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 good. So, in today's session, we will be discussing about theory of competition. So, theory of competition ko hum log bilkul basic se lekar chalenge. And if you have any doubts, you can ask your doubts in the chat window. I can read your chats. So, ab sabhi ki chats mein pad sakna hoon. Okay. And uh, so, again, because we are starting, to hum log basic se hi lekar chalenge. Uh, do cheze hai. There are two important things that is important. One is uh, because the examination is very close, so इसी वजह से मैं theory of competition है. I'll be covering uh, in a manner कि आपको सब कुछ समझ में आए. You will be able to solve every question in the examination. At the same time, हम लोग कोशिश करेंगे कि हम uh, जो classes हैं, वो uh, उसके अंदर previous question ज़्यादा cover कर सकें. So those students who have taken uh, the courses, uh, you can also watch the same classes in the pre-recorded videos. वहाँ पर भी आप इसको देख सकते हैं. But again, we'll be doing these classes every day. Or uh, because in the past 10 days I was not available, हम लोग class नहीं कर पाए थे. So I'm going to make up for that time. तो हमारे जो classes होंगे, most of these classes are going to be long classes. Every day at least five to six hours की classes हमारी लगेगी live. And uh, so let, let us start. Okay. So as the name suggests, the name is theory of computation, right? So it is T O C. In short, we say it is as T O C. And in some colleges, they also call it as automata. TOC as well as automata. So automata is uh, derived from the word automaton, and automaton is derived from the word automation. So हम लोग इस subject में कर क्या रहे हैं? So सबसे पहले आप सभी answer कीजिए in the chat window कि हम लोग इस subject में कर क्या रहे हैं? Why do you even study this subject? हम इस study subject को पढ़ते क्यों हैं? Why do you even study theory of competition? So let us discuss the time later on. सबसे पहले let us start the subject, let us start the topic. और वो सब चीजें हम लोग धीरे-धीरे अपडेट कर देंगे in the sessions as well as in the community tab also. तो so why do we even start? Why do we even study theory of competition? बंदना प्रतिभा जय theory of competition का मतलब क्या? Why do we even study theory of competition? TOC हम पढ़ते क्यों हैं? to understand the behavior of machine that is not correct so we are not studying toc to understand the behavior of machine machines ka behavior samajhne ke liye hum toc nahi padhte hain okay so just for everyone because some of you are joining the session for the very first time so why do we uh, what we'll do is every sentence that i'm going to say i'm going to repeat every sentence in english as well as in hindi so har ek sentence ko hum bilingual mein karenge hindi mein bhi karenge aur english mein bhi karenge so that it becomes easy for everyone to understand no we do not study toc to design machines hum toc ko machines design karne ke liye nahi study karte hain pratibha do you have Hi Mary. So what is theory of competition? देखो यहाँ पर we have two words. One is theory and second one is competition. And this competition is mostly related to mathematics. Okay. And this automata is related to automation. And I think you already know the word, the meaning of the word theory. आप सभी को theory का meaning जो है वो already पता है. So basically here we try to understand what are the mathematical models and how the machines can solve the problem. Theory of computation जो है in that subject we try and understand कि machines जो है वो problems को कैसे solve करती है. We try to do more research on this topic and we try to formulate some kind of mathematical model which will be able to solve more problems and more computations can be done. So we also try to understand what is the limitations of the computation. जैसे कि हमारे पास here we are going to study various different automata. For example, we have finite automata we have push down automata we have linear bound automata and we have turing machine now these turing machines as as powerful as your modern day computers so aapke turing machines hain to aapke modern day computers jitni hi powerful hai but again if you know that you, uh, this uh, uh, turing machines are as powerful as the modern day computer then can you design a machine which is even more powerful than 
योर ट्यूरिंग मशीन क्या आप कोई ऐसी मशीन बना सकते हैं जो ट्यूरिंग मशीन से भी ज़्यादा पावरफुल है राइट सो वी ट्राई टू डू मोर रिसर्च ऑन दिस टॉपिक कि किस किस तरह की प्रॉब्लम्स हैं वट आर द कैटेगरीज ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स वट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स एंड वट आर द डिफरेंट मैथमेटिकल मॉडल्स जो ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्ट करते हैं विच ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्ट टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम्स ऐसे कौन कौन से मैथमेटिकल मॉडल्स हैं जो ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्ट करते हैं इन प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व करने के लिए एंड आफ्टर दैट अगेन वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ फॉर अ सर्टन मॉडल वी कैन सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम्स एंड वट इज द लिमिटेशन ऑफ दैट मॉडल देन अगेन हाउ कैन अ न्यू मॉडल बी प्रपोज देन वट विल बी द लिमिटेशन ऑफ दैट प्रॉब्लम दैट मॉडल वो मॉडल्स किस तरह की प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व कर सकता है अगेन वी कैन सी थर्ड काइंड ऑफ मॉडल एंड अगेन वील ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड किस मॉडल की लिमिटेशन क्या है इन द एंड विल बी स्टडिंग थ्यू ट्यूरिंग मशीन एंड वी नो द ट्यूरिंग मशीन आर एज पावरफुल आइडिया एज यर मॉडर्न डे कंप्यूटर्स सो कैन यू डिजाइन अ मशीन कैन यू फॉर्मुलेट अ मशीन विच इज इवन मोर पावरफुल दैन ट्यूरिंग मशीन दैट मीन्स अगर आप एक ऐसी मशीन बना सकते हैं विच इज इवन मोर पावरफुल दैन ट्यूरिंग मशीन दैट मीन्स यू विल बी एबल टू सॉल्व मोर प्रॉब्लम इसका मतलब है आप और भी ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व कर सकते हैं दिस इज वट वी आर ट्राइंग टू अचीव दिस इज वट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू ओके तो हेयर सो हियर अगेन हम लोग जो यहाँ पर स्टडी करेंगे मशीन्स और मैथमेटिकल प्रॉब्लम्स के बारे में डिस्कस करेंगे तो हेयर लेट अस सी द सिलेबस ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल बी लुकिंग एट व्हाट इज द बेसिक्स सो इन बेसिक्स वी विल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द बेसिक ऑफ अ लैंग्वेज सो लैंग्वेज के बेसिक्स क्या होते हैं देन अगेन वी विल बी सींग वट आर ग्रामर्स and then again we will be see an example of a machine okay and then we will be starting with dfas which is also called as deterministic finite automatas and after dfas we will be discussing about nfas with is non deterministic finite automatas and there are various problems related to both of them hum log study karenge ki dfas kya hota hai nfas kya hota hai and again what are different models related to them and how can you convert a dfa to nfa how can you convert an nfa to dfa there are a lot of things that we are going to study in between and after this we will be discussing about your push down automata which is also called as pda and then we will be discussing about what are regular languages and what are regular expressions and then conversions the various conversions will be there so conversions like how can you convert a regular expression to a finite automata and how can you convert a finite automata to the regular expression so these things we are going to discuss in this conversions and then we'll be also ch checking out checking out this push down automata and the languages accepted by push down automata which is your context free language so we'll have a complete discussion regarding context free language we'll have a complete discussion regarding context free grammar and also because we have discussed about this dfas we'll also discuss about the regular grammar we'll also discuss about the context sensitive grammar and then we will also discuss about the recursively enumerable languages then we'll be having the recursive languages then we'll have a discussion regarding your uh, uh, type uh, zero languages uh, so we'll have more discussions regarding all of them right so so here we have unrestricted grammar also which is your type 0 grammar and so on there are a lot of things that we will be discussing okay so because we are discussing context sensitive grammar so we will also discuss about context sensitive languages okay and after this we will check out what is a turing machine so turing machines kya hoti hai and what are the limitations of turing machines and how what is a linear bound automata so linear bound automata and after this linear bound automata we'll also discuss about the computability as well as decidability hum log computability aur decidability ke bare mein discuss karenge 
so this topic is very important uh, i'll discuss what are the topics which are important or uh, the topics that you can leave so if you look at all of these topics agar aap topic number 1 se lekar topic number 8 tak dekhenge these topics are very important for ugc net so ugc net ke andar from topic number 1 to 8 they ask many questions but they do not really ask lot of questions regarding this unrestricted unrestricted grammar they do not ask questions related to recursively enumerable languages or recursive languages so unse zyada questions aapke paas nahi aate hain and before this recent time i mean till 2017 2018 they do not used to ask questions based on decidability and computability so 2007 or 2008 uh, 2017 or 2018 se pehle aapke paas computability and decidability ke upar zyada questions ugc net mein nahi aate hain and still if you check in the previous two years they asked very few questions related to the computability and decidability so this will be kind of an optional topic so if you want to cover this computability and decidability i will cover it here but again that is your choice if you want to leave this topic or not that is that is completely your choice so we will be discussing from the very basics what is the basics of a language and what exactly is a language what is a grammar grammar kya hota hai language kya hota hai and what are, what are different machines so ye sab cheeze hum log discuss karenge so during the class i expect all of you to bring some notebooks and pen आप जो भी मैं कराऊंगा सो बिकॉज फॉर अदर सब्जेक्ट्स प्रतिभा जय आई हैव गिवन प्रेजेंटेशन एंड पीपीटीज सो इन दिस सब्जेक्ट आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गिव एनी प्रेजेंटेशन एंड पीपीटी यहाँ पर मैं प्रेजेंटेशन और पीपीटीज नहीं दूंगा सो आई एम गोइंग टू आई दर आई एम गोइंग टू डिक्टेट समथिंग या फिर मैं बोर्ड पर कुछ आपको लिखवाऊंगा सो आई एक्सपेक्ट कि वो सभी चीज़ें आप अपनी नोटबुक के अंदर साथ साथ नोट डाउन करेंगे सो इट इज़ बेटर कि आप उसको नोट डाउन करें ओके सो इफ यू गाइज आर रेडी वी कैन स्टार्ट कैन यू जस्ट राइट इन द चार्ट विंडो दैट यू गाइज आर रेडी आप सभी रेडी हैं और हम लोग स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं अगर आप इसका नोट डाउन कर लेते हैं सो एज सुन एज समथिंग इज रिटर्न सो बिफोर डिलीटिंग और बिफोर रबिंग माई बोर्ड तो मैं आपको बताऊंगा कि आप इसको नोट डाउन करें आई मीन आई गिव यू एनफ टाइम टू नोट डाउन सो वाई लाइम टीचिंग यू कैन नोट इट डाउन ऑब्वियसली बट अगेन आफ्टर बिफोर रबिंग माई बोर्ड आई विल गिव यू टाइम कि आप इसको नोट डाउन कर सके आप इसको नोट डाउन करने के बाद जस्ट राइट इन द चार्ट विंडो दैट डन एंड वी कैन कंटिन्यू ready to fly okay good okay fine so let us first understand with the layman perspective ki language kya hoti hai to hum log sabse pehle basic se lekar chalenge hum log bahut zyada in depth mein aise cover nahi karenge ki aapko problem ho samajhne ke liye to main sabse pehle bilkul basic se lekar chalunga aur dheere dheere hum difficult topics ko bhi cover karenge theek hai to sabse pehla aapka topic hai uh, we should know what is a language तो लैंग्वेज होती क्या है सो लैंग्वेज इज अ मीडियम थ्रू विच यू कैन कम्युनिकेट विद समवन राइट सो आइदर यू वांट टू कम्युनिकेट विद अ ह्यूमन बीइंग और यू वांट टू कम्युनिकेट विद अ मशीन और यू वांट टू कम्युनिकेट विद सम यू वांट टू गिव सम काइंड ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शंस यू ऑलवेज नीड अ लैंग्वेज फॉर दिस राइट जैसे कि आप अगर हम लोग ह्यूमन अंडरस्टैंडेबल फॉर्मेट की बात करते हैं आई एम स्पीकिंग टू यू सो आई एम स्पीकिंग इन अ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज ऑल्सो आई कैन स्पीक इन अ हिंदी लैंग्वेज सो दिस इज अ ह्यूमन अंडरस्टैंडेबल लैंग्वेज बट वेन यू आर कम्युनिकेटिंग विद योर कंप्यूटर सिस्टम देन यू कैन नॉट कम्युनिकेट इन द इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज या फिर जो हमारे पास हिंदी लैंग्वेज में है हम इस तरीके से कंप्यूटर सिस्टम के साथ कम्युनिकेट नहीं कर सकते हैं वाई यू कैन नॉट कम्युनिकेट विद कंप्यूटर सिस्टम इन दिस लैंग्वेज इस लैंग्वेज में आप अपने कंप्यूटर सिस्टम के साथ कम्युनिकेट क्यों नहीं कर सकते देर आर टू मेजर रीजन पहला रीजन ये है दैट योर लैंग्वेजेस आर एम्बिक्यूस आपकी जो लैंग्वेज है वो एम्बिक्यूस है एंड सेकेंडली योर लैंग्वेज आर कॉन्टेक्स सेंसिटिव आपकी जो लैंग्वेज है वो context sensitive hai these are two very big reasons that is why because of these these two reasons you cannot communicate with your computer system in these languages for example jaise ki agar main bolta hu if i say you are hot what do you mean by this you are hot right iska matlab kya hai iska matlab hai Uh, if you speak to someone, right? So if if I'm speaking to you, you are hot. It means either it means that your temperature is high. Hai. Your temperature is high, right? Maybe you are having fever. If you are having fever, obviously you are hot, right? Or you are hot in looking, correct? So one sentence ke you have two meanings. There are two meanings in the, of this sentence. In the same way, if I say you are very sweet. अगर मैं बोलता हूं कि आप बहुत स्वीट है यू आर वेरी वेरी स्वीट इसका मतलब क्या है 
अब खाने में स्वीट है या स्वीट बिकॉज आई कैन ईट यू एंड आई फील दैट यू आर स्वीट और यू आर स्वीट बिकॉज ऑफ योर नेचर राइट सो दिस सेंटेंस इज हैविंग टू मीनिंग्स दिस सेंटेंस इज हैविंग टू मीनिंग्स इन द सेम वे देर सो मेनी सेंटेंसेज इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज वेर ईच सेंटेंसेज आर हैविंग लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट मीनिंग्स काफी ऐसे सेंटेंसेज है जिनके अलग अलग मीनिंग्स हो सकते हैं Now, because the sentences are having different meanings, this makes these kind of sentences as ambiguous. So, what is ambiguous? Ambiguous means something that creates confusion. ऐसा कुछ जो confusion को create करे उसको हम बोलते हैं ambiguous. So, इस तरीके से आपके जो languages है the languages that we are saying, this is very very different, right? Now, secondly, your languages are कॉन्टेक्स्ट सेंसिटिव ऑल्सो कॉन्टेक्स्ट सेंसिटिव यानी कि आप किस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में बात कर रहे हैं योर मीनिंग ऑफ द सेंटेंस चेंजेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल हियर इफ यू से यू आर वेरी वेरी स्वीट राइट सो दिस इज अ कॉन्टेक्स्ट इफ यू आर सेंग यू आर वेरी स्वीट टू अ डिश सो दैट मीन्स द डिश इज स्वीट इन टर्म्स ऑफ मीटिंग एज वेल एज इफ यू आर सेंग द सेम सेंटेंस टू ह्यूमन बींग दैट मीन्स दैट द पर्सन इज हैविंग अ वेरी गुड नेचर करेक्ट तो दिस इज द रीजन वाई दिस दिस सम काइंड ऑफ कॉन्टेक्ट सेंसिटिविटी सेंसिटिविटी इन द सेम वे लेटर सपोज मेल इज कमिंग और मैन इज कमिंग सो से ही इज कमिंग राइट ही इज कमिंग ही इज कमिंग वो आ रहा है और शी इज कमिंग द काइंड ऑफ पर्सन इज कमिंग दिस वर्ड इज ऑल्सो चेंजिंग ही इज चेंज टू शी तो इस तरीके से आप देख सकते हैं दैट योर ईच एंड एवरी वर्ड और लॉट ऑफ सेंटेंसेस आर देयर वेयर वी डिस्कस अबाउट कॉन्टेक्स्ट कि किस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में बात कर रहे हैं किस बारे में बात कर रहे हैं तो कॉन्टेक्स्ट की वजह से सेंटेंस का मीनिंग चेंज हो जाता है कॉन्टेक्स्ट की वजह से वी ऑल्सो चेंज द वर्ड्स दैट वी यूज इन द सेंटेंस सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी बिग रीजन वाई यू कैनॉट यूज दिस सेंटेंसेज फॉर अ गिविंग इंस्ट्रक्शन टू अ कंप्यूटर सिस्टम बिकॉज अ कंप्यूटर सिस्टम नीड्स प्रिसाइज इंस्ट्रक्शन सो दीज आर नॉट प्रिसाइज These instructions are not precise. ये जो instruction है वो precise नहीं है And your computer नीड system needs precise instructions, right? So it's a very uh, you know there's a huge difference here. तो हमें चाहिए so we need a language where we can give precise instructions. So even if you say every language of the world, 99.9% नाइन languages of the world the, that is used to communicate. so these languages are ambiguous so the most precise language that we have in the entire universe which can be used for human communication is sanskrit so this is something that you can be proud of ki jo sanskrit language hai it is the most precise language in the universe so you can even use sanskrit language to do computer programming in the computer system aap isko use kar sakte hain correct now so what we need is we need some kind of language we need some language to give instructions to give instructions so ye instructions aap kisko denge so we are going to give these instructions to a computer system you might be giving these instructions to a mathematical model you might be giving these instructions to a machine to aap kisi ko bhi instructions denge for that you need some kind of language okay and we are going to discuss about these languages only versus what are the uh, various uh, properties of a language language ki properties kya hoti hai and how can you formulate a language there are a lot of things that we are going to study here okay so i'm going to rub it you want to write it down agar aapne isko likh liya just write down in the chat window if you have written it so i'm going to rub it right so if i say that we are going to design a language now there are various building blocks of a language building blocks of a language so first of all for every language we are going to define something called as alphabets of the language so let us suppose we have a english language for that alphabet is a b c up to so on z for hindi language we have alphabet as k k up to so on i don't know what is the last character so we have alphabets here right and with the help of these alphabets we create something called as a words so in english we have he she they except right we have lot of words which are present so hindi mein we have different words like khana 
gana and so on there are a lot of words in hindi language as well as in english language now we use something called as a grammar here to create sentences to create sentences here okay तो आप यहां पर किसी ग्रामर का यूज करते हैं सेंटेंसेस को बनाने के लिए सो फॉर एग्जांपल सेंटेंसेस कैन बी ही इज वेरी स्वीट सो दिस इज अ सेंटेंस ओके सो दिस ग्रामर हियर इट गिव्स रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस सो दिस ग्रामर गिव्स रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस दैट मींस हाउ कैन यू कंबाइन these words to create meaningful sentences so these sentences should be having some kind of meaning so that means we have a few important things here so first of all we have an alphabet and with the help of these alphabets i'm going to create some words which are valid combinations of alphabet words are valid combinations of alphabet for example if i say combination as i i i p some combination so basically this combination might not be a valid combination if i say the combination as x y z so this is not a valid combination so in every language there are some combinations which are valid and there are some combinations which are invalid so these valid combinations create a valid word and we combine these words with the help of a grammar so that we can create meaningful sentences and these sentences are also called as strings hum in sentences ko yahan par strings bhi bolte hain clear now when i say i need a programming language or i need a new language new language which should be mathematically precise which should be मैथमेटिकली प्रिसाइज हमें एक ऐसी लैंग्वेज चाहिए जो मैथमेटिकली प्रिसाइज हो सो इफ यू नीड अ लैंग्वेज विच इज मैथमेटिकली प्रिसाइज फॉर दैट अगेन वी हैव टू क्रिएट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वट आर द एल्फाबेट्स इन द लैंग्वेज वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वट आर द एल्फाबेट्स इन द लैंग्वेज एंड देन वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड अ वे टू क्रिएट वैलिड स्ट्रिंग्स वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड अ वे टू क्रिएट वैलिड स्ट्रिंग्स and we have to understand a way to define a grammar for it to iske liye hame kuch batana padega jo ki batayega ki iske liye grammar valid kya hai okay let me give an example here if i say we have c language if you have a c language so c itself is a language so in a c language you have some valid alphabets और यहां पर कुछ ऐसे रिजर्व वर्ड्स है वी हैव रिजर्व वर्ड्स इन सी लैंग्वेज तो रिजर्व कौन वर्ड्स कौन कौन से आपके पास यू हैव वर्ड इन टी इंट यू हैव वर्ड फॉर यू हैव वर्ड वाइल यू हैव वर्ड ब्रेक यू हैव वर्ड इफ यू हैव वर्ड एल्स इस तरीके से इन सी लैंग्वेज यू हैव टोटल ऑफ थर्टी टू रिजर्व वर्ड्स सो दीज रिजर्व वर्ड्स आर बेसिकली सम वैलिड कॉम्बिनेशन and with the help of these reserved words you create a sentence right and here the sentence is represented by a program so that means if i say we have this main function and here i have integer a we have integer b we are going to do a is equal to 5 plus 6 we are going to do b is equal to a plus 11 right so if i write a program in c language to ye jo pura aapka program hai this entire program is a string this entire program is a string so what we have done is so first of all we under uh, and we define what are the important or you can say reserved word in the language right or reserved words ko here you can also you know equate them in the form of an alphabet aap in reserved word ko ek tarike se alphabet ke sath bhi equate kar sakte hain now we create we created something called as a grammar here and in c language what is a grammar to so, c language grammar ke something that defines what will be the structure of the program c language agar hum kisi program ka structure ko define karte hain that structure defines a grammar ab yahan par ye jo pura ek program aapke bana hai c language ka now this entire program is a string and how can you say this program is valid so to say that this program is valid so using this grammar if you can make it agar aap is grammar ke sath 
इस प्रोग्राम को बना सकते हैं देन वी से दैट दिस ग्रामर इज दिस प्रोग्राम इज वैलिड सो अब हमारे पास दो कॉन्सेप्ट यहाँ पर आते हैं हाउ कैन यू आइडेंटिफाई द वर्ड्स आर वैलिड और नॉट आप किस तरीके से आइडेंटिफाई करेंगे कि आपके पास जो वर्ड्स हैं वो वैलिड है या नहीं है एंड सेकेंडली हाउ कैन यू क्रिएट दिस ग्रामर जिससे आप इस वैलिड सेंटेंस को क्रिएट कर सकें अब देखो वट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज वी आर गोइंग टू हैव टू कॉन्सेप्ट हियर विच इज योर ऑटोमेटास द कॉन्सेप्ट आर योर ऑटोमेटास सो ऑटोमेटा इज अ मशीन जिसके अंदर इफ यू आर गोइंग टू गिव अ स्ट्रिंग सो इट इज गोइंग टू टेल वेदर द स्ट्रिंग इज वैलिड और द स्ट्रिंग इज इन वैलिड तो ऑटोमेटा बताएगा कि जो भी स्ट्रिंग आप इसको देंगे वो स्ट्रिंग वैलिड है या फिर वो स्ट्रिंग इन वैलिड है एंड दिस ग्रामर्स विल बी यूज टू क्रिएट स्ट्रिंग्स ये जो ग्रामर है वो स्ट्रिंग्स क्रिएट करने के लिए यूज होती है ओके okay? इतना समझ आया सबको प्लीज राइट इट डाउन वट एवर रिटर्न द बोर्ड यू कैन राइट इट डाउन एंड आफ्टर राइटिंग डाउन प्लीज राइट डाउन इन द चार्ट विंडो तो लेटस सी इच ऑफ दीज थिंग्स वन बाय वन तो हम लोग सब कुछ चेक करेंगे हाउ कैन यू से प्रोग्राम इज वैलिड और यू कैन से हाउ कैन यू से स्ट्रिंग इज वैलिड और नॉट सो वी आर गोइंग डिस्कस इच एंड एवरी थिंग वन बाय वन तो सबसे पहले स्टार्ट करते हैं अभी हम लोग थोड़ा सा जोश में आ जाते हैं बिकॉज जितना क्लास स्लो होगी उतना जोश खत्म हो जाएगा तो सबसे पहले जोश में आ जाते हैं राइट तो फर्स्ट थिंग इज यू हैव टू डिफाइन वट आर द एल्फाबेट्स ऑफ द लैंग्वेज तो सबसे पहले आप एल्फाबेट्स को डिफाइन करेंगे करेक्ट तो वी कैन से वी हैव एन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज सो इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज यू हैव एल्फाबेट्स फ्रॉम कैपिटल ए कैपिटल बी अप टू सॉन कैपिटल जेड ये सभी आपके पास एल्फाबेट्स है इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज में यू कैन ऑल्सो हैव एल्फाबेट्स इन योर ओन लैंग्वेज सो इफ आई एम गोइंग टू क्रिएट माई ओन लैंग्वेज सो इन दिस लैंग्वेज आई कैन से आई हैव वन एल्फाबेट आपके पास सिर्फ एक भी एक एल्फाबेट हो सकता है You can also have two alphabets. You can have three alphabets. You can have any number of alphabets. So this set of alphabets, which is language, can there? I'm going to represent this set of alphabet using summation. So if I say summation is equal to a, b, up to so on, z, that means this is a set of all the possible alphabets in the language. So here you can say this represents. What is the cardinality of summation? Right? This is a set representation. This is a set representation, and this represents the cardinality of this. So, cardinality of this set for English language is 26. English language में आपके पास 26 alphabets है. Now, if I say that we have summation is equal to small a, that means in my language I have only one alphabet. If I say summation is equal to a comma b. That means in my language we have two alphabets. If I say summation is equal to a comma b comma c, in my language I have three alphabets. If I say summation is equal to zero comma one, that means again in my language we have two alphabets. Now if you look at clearly, अगर आप इसको थोड़ा सा ध्यान से देखेंगे, so these are zero and one these are binary numbers. So any computer program they will be in return converted to बाइनरी तो जितने भी कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम है दे आर द लास्ट ऑल दिस प्रोग्राम आर कन्वर्टेड टू बाइनरी सो बेसिकली कंप्यूटर ओनली अंडरस्टैंड लैंग्वेज वेयर यू हैव ओनली टू एल्फाबेट्स विच इज एल्फाबेट जीरो एज वेल एज योर एल्फाबेट वन एंड वी नो दैट एवरी पॉसिबल सिंबल एवरी पॉसिबल इंस्ट्रक्शन एवरी थिंग वी कैन बेसिकली डिफाइन यूजिंग दीज टू एल्फाबेट्स फॉर कंप्यूटर लैंग्वेज कंप्यूटर जो है उसके उसको अगर आप कोई भी इंस्ट्रक्शन देंगे एवरीथिंग कैन बी कन्वर्टेड विद जीरोज एंड वन कंप्यूटर्स को आप जो भी इंस्ट्रक्शन देंगे वो हमेशा बाइनरी में होगी सो एवरी इंस्ट्रक्शन दैट यू आर गोइंग टू गिव इन अ कंप्यूटर दैट इज गोइंग टू बी अ बाइनरी इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड कंप्यूटर अंडरस्टैंड्स अ बाइनरी लैंग्वेज राइट तो जो कंप्यूटर है वो आपकी बाइनरी लैंग्वेज को समझता है फाइन सो इट मीन्स देर इज नो लिमिटेशन दैट हाउ मेनी एल्फाबेट्स यू वॉन्ट टू यूज यू कैन यूज वन एल्फाबेट फॉर लैंग्वेज यू कैन यूज टू एल्फाबेट्स फॉर लैंग्वेज यू कैन यूज थ्री एल्फाबेट्स फॉर लैंग्वेज यू कैन यूज एनी नंबर ऑफ एल्फाबेट्स फॉर योर लैंग्वेज आप कितने भी एल्फाबेट्स अपनी लैंग्वेज में यूज कर सकते हैं सो इफ आई से वी हैव समीशन इज इक्वल टू जीरो कमा वन दैट मीन्स इट इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग द सेट ऑफ एल्फाबेट्स इन माई लैंग्वेज ओके Now, if I say that summation cross summation, so summation cross summation is cross product of a set with itself. 
अगर मैं समीशन क्रॉस समीशन लेता हूं तो इसे हमें क्या मिलेगा दैट विल बी जीरो कमा वन क्रॉस जीरो कमा वन विच इज इक्वल टू जीरो 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 वन वन जीरो एंड वन वन एंड दिस इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय समीशन स्क्वायर अगर आप इसको ध्यान से देखेंगे दिस इज सेट ऑफ ऑल बाइनरी स्ट्रिंग्स हुज लेंथ इज टू इट इज अ बाइनरी स्ट्रिंग it is a binary string it is a binary string and it is a binary string so this is a set of all possible binary string whose length is actually 2 if i say summation raised to power 3 it means summation square cross summation or summation cross summation square or summation cross summation cross summation so summation raised to power 3 ka matlab kya hai when you are going to perform this multiplication when you are going to do this cross product you are going to get all the possible strings whose length is actually 3 so your possible strings are going to be 0001010101011001001011 and 111 this is a set of all possible strings whose length is actually 3 Now, if I say we have summation raised to power four, so summation raised to power four is going to be set of all possible strings whose length is four, so which can be zero 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 one zero zero one zero 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 one one and so on, and the last will be one 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 one. So this is a set of all possible strings whose length is four. In the same way, I can say summation raised to power five, set of all possible strings whose length is five. Summation raised to power six, set of all possible strings whose length is six, and so on. Okay. Now there is one more special summation here. The summation raised to power zero. So summation raised to power zero means it is a set of all possible strings whose length is actually zero, and we say that this is epsilon. So in some books, in which this summation raised to power zero is represented by epsilon, in some books. This summation raised to power zero is represented by lambda. So summation raised to power zero, which is epsilon, is also represented by lambda. So summation raised to power zero is represented by lambda. So if I take the powers of summation, this means that we have all the strings which have length. Like summation raised to power three means length of all set of all possible strings of length three. Summation raised to power four means set of all possible strings of length four. Now if I do a union of all of them. That is, if I do summation raised to power zero, union summation raised to power one, union, union summation raised to power two, union summation raised to power two, up to so on till infinity. So set of every summation. So this is going to be epsilon comma zero comma one comma zero 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 one one zero up to so on. It will continue till infinity. So basically, if I take this infinite union, यहाँ पर जितने भी summations की power exist करती है, if I take an infinite union, so this will be set of all possible strings over a given alphabet, and this will be represented by summation star. So I just write star like this, summation star. So summation star means set of all possible strings. over a given alphabet summation star means set of all possible strings over a given alphabet agar yahan par hamare paas in this language we had two alphabets which is 0 and 1 aapke paas sirf do hi alphabet the 0 aur 1 to agar hum summation raised to power 2 bolte hain to yahan par ab aapke paas wo sabhi strings aayenge jo ki 2 length ki hai to usi tarike se ab main is case mein agar check karunga if i take summation star to yahan se jitne bhi possible strings hain with zeros and one each of those strings each and every one of those strings can be formulated jitne bhi possible strings hain wo sabhi strings yahan par formulate ki ja sakti hai is it clear kya aap sabhi ke sath ye clear hai do any one of you have any doubts kya kisi ko koi doubt hai yahan par good so no doubts that's good correct now is case mein for a language ek language mein we say that all of these strings jitni bhi string possible hai all of these strings are not valid okay jaise ki if i take an example so for english language 
for english language the set of summation is a to z correct so for this language what is summation star for english language summation star can be epsilon single a single b up to so on single z then a a a b up to so on a z then b a b b up to so on b z up to so on then we can have uh, three length strings and so on right so we can have infinite set अब ये जो इन्फाइनाइट सेट है देर आर सम स्ट्रिंग्स विच आर वैलिड फॉर इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड देर आर सम स्ट्रिंग्स विच आर नॉट वैलिड इसमें से कुछ ऐसी स्ट्रिंग्स हैं जो कि वैलिड है और कुछ ऐसी स्ट्रिंग्स हैं जो कि वैलिड नहीं है ओके सो फॉर दैट वी हैव टू डिफाइन द लैंग्वेज सो फॉर इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज बिकॉज इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इज ह्यूज बट स्टिल द नंबर ऑफ वर्ड्स इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इज डिफाइंड जो इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज है वो आपके पास फाइनाइट है योर इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इज फाइनाइट इन टर्म्स ऑफ वर्ड्स कि जितने भी वर्ड्स इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज में एग्जिस्ट करते हैं यू कैन काउंट एवरी पॉसिबल वर्ड ऐसा नहीं है कि इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इन्फाइनाइट वर्ड है नंबर ऑफ वर्ड्स इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इज फाइनाइट बट अगेन यू कैन क्रिएट इन्फाइनाइटली डिफरेंट सेंटेंसेज विद द हेल्प ऑफ दोज वर्ड्स आप उन वर्ड्स की हेल्प से इन्फाइनाइट अलग अलग सेंटेंसेज को क्रिएट कर सकते हैं सो इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज हेयर is your finite language it is not infinite so again we have we can define for our language how many words can be there in the language us words mein strings kitni ho sakti hai aap usko strings kahenge words kahenge anything that you like so i'm just going to call it as a string so i'm going to say how many strings will be there in a language okay please note it down isko note down kar lijiye ओके समबडी वॉज आस्किंग मी सर हाउ कैन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज बी फाइनाइट ओके तो लेट मी जस्ट गिव यू सम फैक्ट्स स्टैटिस्टिक्स मे बी यू विल फाइंड दिस फैक्ट्स एंड स्टैटिस्टिक्स एज इंटरेस्टिंग इफ यू सी स्पैनिश लैंग्वेज इन स्पैनिश लैंग्वेज देर अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन लैख वर्ड्स स्पैनिश लैंग्वेज में वन लैख वर्ड्स हैं इन जर्मन लैंग्वेज वी हैव अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन लैख एंड थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड वर्ड्स and in russian language you have 2 lakh words you have 2 lakh words approx and if you look at italian we have 2 lakh 70000 words french is also having 1 lakh words and uh, in in korean and japanese language they have 5 lakh words korean or japanese language mein lagbhag 5 lakh words hain okay aur uh, जो इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज है अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन मिलियन वर्ड्स आर देर इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज जो इंग्लिश की ऑक्सफोर्ड डिक्शनरी है सो इन ऑक्सफोर्ड डिक्शनरी इन ऑफ इंग्लिश सो दैट ऑक्सफोर्ड डिक्शनरी इज यूजिंग वन लैख सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड समथिंग वर्ड्स इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज ऑक्सफोर्ड डिक्शनरी जो इंग्लिश की है उसमें जितने भी पॉसिबल वर्ड्स हैं इंग्लिश के अंदर वो सभी डिफाइंड होते हैं एंड ऑक्सफोर्ड डिक्शनरी हैव वन लैख सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड इफ आई वॉन्ट टू बी करेक्ट इट इज सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड सेवेंटी सिक्स वर्ड्स आपके पास ऑक्सफोर्ड में वन लैख सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड सेवेंटी सिक्स वर्ड है एंड द वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट डिक्शनरी जो इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज की है दैर इज हमिंग फोर लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड वर्ड्स तो बेसिकली जो भी ज़्यादा लैंग्वेज है वर्ल्ड की so all of them are having less than uh, 5 lakh words or if you see in english language jo hamare day to day communication ke liye hum log use karte hain we use approximately 1.7% of the words jo english language mein exist karte hain usme se hum sirf 1.7% words ko hi use karte hain so you can clearly see that even your english language and each of these languages they are finite these languages are not infinite so your language is infinite nahi hai so let us take a few example here if i say summation is equal to 0 comma 1 okay so, so that means uh, we have only two alphabets in our language now if i say summation star so summation star is going to be epsilon single zero single one zero 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 one one zero one one up to so on till infinity okay so summation star ke andar there are infinite number of combinations now we can define languages to hum log apni languages ko define kar sakte hain and we can define them mathematically so we can define mathematical languages here so why i am saying that we are defining languages mathematically languages ko mathematically kyu define kar rahe hain the reason is very very simple ki 
अगर आपकी लैंग्वेज मैथमेटिकली प्रिसाइज होगी देन योर मशीन विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द लैंग्वेज वेरी ईजिली आपकी जो मशीन हैं वो लैंग्वेजेस को बहुत ईजिली समझ पाएंगे ओके सो इफ आई से माई लैंग्वेज इज मैथमेटिकली डिफाइंड सो आई कैन से लेट अस सपोज वी हैव लैंग्वेज एल वन एंड दिस लैंग्वेज एल वन इज सेट ऑफ ऑल स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ लेंथ टू ओवर ओवर समीशन इज इक्वल टू ए कमा बी तो हमारे पास वो सभी स्ट्रिंग्स जिसकी लेंथ टू है वो यहां पर आ जाती है एंड दिस कैन ऑल्सो रिटर्न एस एल वन इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू सच दैट लेंथ ऑफ डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल टू टू एंड डब्ल्यू बिलोंग्स टू समीशन स्टार तो आप सेम लैंग्वेज को मैथमेटिकली इस तरीके से भी डिफाइन कर सकते हैं सो दिस इज बेसिकली अ सेट बिल्डर फॉर्म ये आपकी एक सेट बिल्डर फॉर्म है ठीक है एंड दिस इज जस्ट अ डिस्क्रिप्टिव फॉर्म ओके एज वेल एज वी कैन ऑल्सो गिव द एग्जैक्ट स्ट्रिंग्स दैट आर प्रेजेंट इन दिस लैंग्वेज तो हमारे पास इफ आई से That we have two symbols which is zero and one. So what are the strings which are which can be formulated using this? So कौन कौन से string है आपके पास यहाँ पर? So the strings can be zero zero, zero one, one zero, and one one. So these are every possible string whose length is exactly two. Okay? So ये जो strings हैं इन सब की length जो है वो exactly two है. In the same way, I can say That w such that length of w is equal to three, and or you can say less than equal to three, and w belongs to summation star. So, यानी कि वो सभी strings, every possible string whose length is less than or equal to three are present in this language. So, for this language L2, what are the strings that are possible? The strings can be epsilon, zero, one. जीरो 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 वन वन जीरो वन वन जीरो 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 वन जीरो वन जीरो जीरो वन 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 जीरो जीरो वन जीरो वन 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 जीरो एंड वन 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 ओके लाइफ यू सी द कार्डिनैलिटी ऑफ एल टू तो एल टू की कार्डिनैलिटी कितनी कार्डिनैलिटी मीन्स बट आर द नंबर ऑफ स्ट्रिंग्स हियर सो हमें स्ट्रिंग्स आर प्रेजेंट इन एल टू लैंग्वेज वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन फोर्टीन एंड फिफ्टीन सो दर आर टोटल ऑफ फिफ्टीन स्ट्रिंग्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन द लैंग्वेज एल टू ओके आई कैन ऑल्सो से दैट अ लैंग्वेज एल थ्री मीन्स सेट ऑफ ऑल इवन लेंथ स्ट्रिंग्स जितनी भी जो स्ट्रिंग्स हैं जिनकी लेंथ इवन है वो सभी इस लैंग्वेज के अंदर आती है ठीक है सो आई कैन ऑल्सो रिप्रेजेंट लाइक दिस एल थ्री इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू सच दैट लेंथ ऑफ डब्ल्यू मॉट टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड इन सम टाइम्स इन सम बुक्स दिस कैन ऑल्सो भी रिटर्न एज लेंथ ऑफ डब्ल्यू मॉट टू इज कॉन्ग्रेन टू जीरो मॉट टू एंड डब्ल्यू बिलोंग्स टू समीशन स्टार तो मॉड टू मीन्स यानी कि इसकी लेंथ को अगर आप टू से डिवाइड करेंगे सो रिमाइंडर शुड बी जीरो तो अगर इसकी लेंथ वन है सो वन डिवाइडेड बाई टू द रिमाइंडर विल बी वन फाइव डिवाइड बाई टू द रिमाइंडर विल बी वन बट फोर डिवाइड बाई टू द रिमाइंडर विल बी जीरो सो देट मीन जितनी भी स्ट्रिंग्स आपकी ई वन लेंथ की है वो सभी इस लैंग्वेज के अंदर आती है सो दिस लैंग्वेज एल थ्री विल बी है द स्ट्रिंग्स विच आर समीशन जीरो 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 वन वन जीरो वन वन फोर टाइम जीरो अप टू सो ऑन सो जितने भी स्ट्रिंग्स इनके लेंथ इवन है ऑल द स्ट्रिंग्स हुज लेंथ इज इवन दे कम इन दिस लैंग्वेज एल थ्री तो एल थ्री लैंग्वेज के अंदर आपकी इवन लेंथ की स्ट्रिंग्स आएंगी इवन लेंथ स्ट्रिंग्स ओके नो बाय लुकिंग एट ऑल ऑफ दीज एग्जाम्पल्स यू मस्ट बी कन्फ्यूज सर वट इज दिस एप्सलॉन ये एप्सलॉन है क्या दिस एप्सलॉन इज एन इवन लेंथ स्ट्रिंग This epsilon is a null string or what? देखो 
when we have a set which is an empty set जैसे कि if I say a is equal to like this right इसका मतलब क्या है a is an empty set और if I say a is equal to phi that means still means a is an empty set so you have empty brackets or phi they are used to represent empty set okay if I use brackets and a phi here it is means a set containing one element and that element is phi that element is an empty set okay so if i say b is equal to this so if i see the cardinality of b so cardinality of b is going to be one but epsilon is not equal to phi or epsilon is not equal to or epsilon is not equal to epsilon is not equal to this empty set जो epsilon है ना तो वो phi के equal है और ना ही epsilon जो है वो empty set के equal है so clearly you can see epsilon does not mean that we have an empty set epsilon means we have an element whose length is zero okay so if I say we have a set which is containing phi so this is not an empty set anymore this is a set which is containing an element whose length is zero so phi jo hai sirf length zero ko represent kar raha hai but it is still an element yes abhi bhi ek element hai so phi this is not equal to this ye jo hai wo iske equal nahi hai why because it is a set which is containing another empty set it is a set which is containing a string of length zero so string of length zero is not equal to phi so you can say epsilon is not equal to phi by this epsilon jo hai wo phi ke equal nahi hai so we should understand there is a difference between an empty set as well as a difference between phi now jis tarike se english language mein we have infinite number of words usi tarike se for this language l1 we have finite number of strings jitni bhi string possible hai wo yahan par sirf char hai is language ke andar there are only four strings are possible now here you can see for this language l3 there are infinite uh, number of strings are possible this l3 language is infinite so you can see cardinality of l3 is infinity because the set of all possible even length strings is infinite okay so ye jo hai जो इवल एंड स्ट्रिंग का जो सेट है वो इन्फिनाइट होता है एंड इफ यू लुक एट दिस सेट विच इज एल टू एंड एल टू इज ए फाइनाइट सेट एल टू जो है वो एक फाइनाइट सेट है सो दीक्षा इज आस्किंग डू वी नीड टू एड दिस एप्सोन इन ईच एंड एवरी सेट एज फर्स्ट एलिमेंट नो दीक्षा इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी टू एड दिस एप्सोन हर एक सेट के अंदर हमें एप्सोन को एड करने की जरूरत नहीं है वी डो नॉट हैव टू एड एप्सोन इन ईच एंड एवरी सेट इट इज जस्ट अ लैंग्वेज स्पेसिफिकेशन जिस तरह से एक लैंग्वेज है उसकी स्पेसिफिकेशन होती है सो फॉर अ लैंग्वेज स्पेसिफिकेशन वी कैन से दैट दिस इज अ वैलिड वर्ड एंड दिस वर्ड एग्जिस्ट और दिस इज अ वैलिड स्ट्रिंग दिस स्ट्रिंग एग्जिस्ट इन द लैंग्वेज देन वी कैन इंक्लूड दैट स्ट्रिंग right let me give you an example so this is a word chams elise right so i don't know if i am writing the correct spelling so let me search at it right so it is e l y s e e s right so this word is not a valid english word ye ek valid english word nahi hai okay so in english you will read it as champs elise but in french you will read it as champs elise french mein is word ko hum log champs elise bolte hain but in english language we call it as a champs champs elise and champs elise is not a valid word in english english mein ek valid word nahi hai right but it is a word of french it is a french language word okay in fact it is a name of a place in france So Champs Elysees is the name of a place in France. Okay, so in the in the same way, this word doesn't exist in English, but this word English exists in uh, French. So, in this way, we might be having a language, 
which might be having some words which are present or you can say some strings which are present in the language and then we might be having some strings which are not present in the language okay please write it down after writing it out write down in the chat window is go out right can equal write down in the chat window uh, don't worry Pratibha, uh, you will understand it more clearly. I am going to take more examples, so you will understand it. So right now just remember that this epsilon is a string of length 0. Just like that. You do not have to dig deep right now. You will understand step by step with examples you will understand. But right now just understand that when we say epsilon, it means that the string ki length is 0. Hai. String is only one thing. In that string, there is no length of length. Uski. The length is 0. That's it. So you will understand if I take more examples, so you will understand this thing more clearly. Okay. So let's see how many topics we will be able to cover. Uh, I have not formulated the number of topics till now. So let us see how many topics we will be able to cover today. Okay. So let us look more topics, more things here. So I know now what is, what are the alphabets. I know what are the alphabets and I know what is the language. So that we have seen an example of the alphabets and we have seen the example of the language also. Okay. Now after this, we need to, we want to understand what is an automata. So I'm just taking, see, I'm giving an overview right now. Okay, what is the alphabet? What is the language? And what is an automata? I'm just giving an overview. So still, I'm going to cover these languages in more details. Hum log is language ke, I think we'll be taking like 100, 150 examples of a language. So these things we are going to cover in this subject. But right now, I'm just telling you the difference between a language and what is an automata. I'm just telling you the difference. Ki log hai kya? What are these things? Okay. So what is an automata? So automata will be like a mathematical model here or you can say automata will be like a machine. So it is a mathematical machine you can say. Okay. So automata is created from the word which is automaton and this automaton word jo hai, it is very much interrelated to automation. Okay. So let us first understand what is an automata. So this is just like a plural and singular form of each other. So you don't have to focus on that. Just write, just try to understand what exactly is this automata. So what is the responsibility of an automata? Is if you give a string to this automata, this automata will say, this automata will say, this automata will say, if you give a string to this automata, this automata will say, yes, it is a valid string. Ki haan, ye ek valid string hai. Ya fir, it will say, no, it is a invalid string. ये जो string है, ये एक invalid string है. कि अगर इसको कोई भी string आप देंगे, वो string valid है, या फिर नहीं है, that will be uh, that will be given by this auto meta. Okay. So let us see the basic auto meta. That is your finite auto meta. तो जो है सबसे पहला आपके पास, this is the example of a finite auto meta. So in a finite auto meta we have something called as a tape. Ye aapke paas ek tape hai. Now we have a read write head. And we have something called as a finite control. And with this we have a finite memory. Okay. So this is the basic structure of a finite automata. So finite automata mein aapke paas ek tape hai. You have a read write head, you have a finite control and you have a finite memory. Now let me show you with the help of an example. Uh, okay, before that let me just understand this. Uh, you must have studied about tape recorders. Right? So aapke paas pehle kabhi tape recorder ya cassette players hua karte the. Cassette players or you must have seen VCRs, something like this. So this, these things have, uh, these things are very popular in the year 2007, 2005, right? So in 2003, 2004, these cassette players are very important. And they, people used to listen music on these cassette players, okay? So what used to happen is, in these cassettes, we used to have something called as a reel, like this, okay? And then some part is here and we put a read write head here so whenever you play the music this reels used to rotate 
they go from one direction to another direction and these reels are basically electromagnetic reels these are electromagnetic so all your music data or your audio data so you used to store in these tapes in tapes ke andar aap music aur audio data ko store karte the and your cassette players used a read write head to read the data from the reel and they also used this read write head to write something some data on the reel yani ki agar aapko tape ke andar cassette ke andar kuch record karna hai ya usme se kuch sunna hai to uske liye hamare paas ye read write head head hua karte the jo ki us reel mein se read karte the right in the same way you can also consider this as a tape aap isko bhi usi tarike se ek tape ki tarah consider kar sakte hain so what you do on this tape is you write your alphabets right so you have an alphabet a you have an alphabet b or whatever your string is maybe this is your string so you write your string on this tape aap apni jo string hai wo is tape pe likhenge and each of these cells are going to hold one alphabet ye jo sabhi cell hai ye ek alphabet ko hold karte hain and this finite control is going to read this alphabet from the tape or read karne ke baad it is going to go in a state ये एक स्टेट पर चला जाएगा एंड वट एग्जैक्टली दिस स्टेट इज अगर आपने इफ यू स्टडीड दिस डिजिटल लॉजिक सो इन डिजिटल लॉजिक यू मस्ट हैव डिस्कस यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड अबाउट दिस काउंटर्स सो फॉर एवरी काउंटर वी कैन क्रिएट स्टेट फॉर अ काउंटर तो काउंटर की स्टेट्स क्या क्या है एंड दो स्टेट्स आर रिकॉर्डेड इन द सेल राइट तो काउंटर्स जो है एवरी स्टेट कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड इन अ काउंटर लाइक अ सेल राइट सो सेल्स आर बेसिकली ऑफ फ्लिप फ्लॉप विच इज जे के फ्लिप फ्लॉप एस आर फ्लिप फ्लॉप टी फ्लिप फ्लॉप टी फ्लिप फ्लॉप वट एवर फ्लिप फ्लॉप यूर यू गोइंग टू यूज तो ये इन डिजिटल लॉजिक दो फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स यूज टू आर यूज टू स्टोर सम डेटा एंड दो फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स आर यूज टू एक्ट एज ए वन बिट सेल सो उसी तरीके से दिस फाइनेट कंट्रोल इज गोइंग टू रीड सम डेटा फ्रॉम द स्ट्रिंग ये स्ट्रिंग का कुछ डेटा को रीड करेगा दिस डेटा कैन बी एनीथिंग, सो दिस कैन बी रिटर्न इन द स्ट्रिंग्स अल्फाबेट जो भी कि हम बताएंगे सो मे बी वी कैन से इन आवर लैंग्वेज वी हैव अल्फाबेट्स एस ए एंड बी वी कैन से इन आवर लैंग्वेज वी हैव अल्फाबेट्स एंड जीरो एंड वन अगर आई कैन से दैट अल्फाबेट्स इन द लैंग्वेज एस ए एंड बी दैट मीन्स आई कैन लोड द स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ ए एंड बी ऑन दिस टेप If I say the alphabets of the language is zero and one, that means I can load this alphabets zero and one on this tape. Okay. So, जो भी आपके language के alphabet है, I can create some string and I can load this string on this tape, and then this finite control will say after reading this entire string. Does this finite control reach to a specific state? हम वो बोलेंगे हम बोलेंगे एक स्टेट है हमारे पास दिस वन स्टेट विच इज अ फाइनल स्टेट इफ दिस फाइनेट कंट्रोल रीचेज टू दैट फाइनेट फाइनल स्टेट देन वी से दैट दिस स्ट्रिंग इज अ वैलिड स्ट्रिंग अदरवाइज वी से दैट स्ट्रिंग इज अ इनवैलिड स्ट्रिंग अगर एक फाइनेट कंट्रोल एक स्पेसिफिक वैलिड स्टेट पर पहुंचता है तो उसके से हम बोलेंगे जो स्ट्रिंग है वो वैलिड है अदरवाइज वो स्ट्रिंग इनवैलिड है सो जस्ट लाइक इन डिजिटल लॉजिक फॉर काउंटर्स वी क्रिएटेड स्टेट डायग्राम्स हमने काउंटर्स के लिए स्ट्रेट डायग्राम्स भी क्रिएट किए थे आई थिंक फॉर डिजिटल लॉजिक मस्ट हैव स्टडीड एफ एस एम विच इज फाइनाइट स्टेट मशीन ओके सो फाइनाइट स्टेट मशीन मीन्स मशीन विच आर ओनली हैविंग फाइनाइट नंबर ऑफ स्टेट्स सो इन द सेम वे हियर फॉर एवरी लैंग्वेज आई एम गोइंग टू क्रिएट अ मशीन विच इज गोइंग टू बी लाइक अ फाइनाइट स्टेट मशीन सिमिलर टू दिस एफ एस एम बट अगेन दो मशीन विल बी हैविंग अ स्पेसिफिक स्टेट एंड वी कैन नेम दैट स्टेट एज फाइनल हम उस स्टेट को फाइनल बोल सकते हैं इफ आफ्टर रीडिंग द स्ट्रिंग यू कैन गो टू दैट फाइनल स्टेट दैट मीन द स्ट्रिंग इज एक्सेप्टेड यानी कि द स्ट्रिंग इज अ वैलिड स्ट्रिंग लेट मी शो यू विद हेल्प ऑफ एग्जाम्पल देन यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड सो लेट अस से वी हैव समीशन इज इक्वल टू जीरो कमा वन हमारी लैंग्वेज में वी हैव टू अल्फाबेट्स विच इज जीरो एंड द अल्फाबेट वन एंड नाउ वी आर सेंग द लैंग्वेज इज W such that length of W mod 2 or make it uh, W such that length of W is equal to 2 and W belongs to W belongs to summation star okay so that means if i take 
star of this summation then star will be length string of length 0 which is epsilon string of length 1 strings of length 2 strings of length 3 up to so on strings of length 4 then again so on till infinity so there will be infinite number of strings but in this language l we have only those strings whose length is exactly 2 हमारे पास सिर्फ वही strings आएंगी जिसके length जो है वो exactly 2 है थोड़ा इसको ध्यान से समझना those students जो उसको subject को पहली बार पढ़ रहे हैं those students who are studying the subject for the very first time so please try to understand and focus on this this might be a little tricky and complicated so यहाँ पर जो strings आपके पास हैं so strings can be 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 okay now what do we want to do is we want to create an automata we want to create a model of an automata that means to that model if you load a string from here if I say if I load 0 0 now this final automata should go to a final state and it should say that this string is valid but if I load a string which is not present in this language for example if I say the string is 0 0 0 which is a string of length 3 then this should go to a non-final state so this is a non-final state par then we can say that it is a invalid string so in this case we are saying the string is an invalid string in this case we can say the string is a valid string okay so here those students who have done btech and mtech they know finite automatas and they have studied this subject very thoroughly in their BTEC, MTEC as well as in GATE but the students who are from MCA or MSc background so 99% of you have not studied this subject before so MCA or MSc wale students hai, please try and focus on this so here how can we create an automata let me just show you with the help of, my, uh, with the help of a diagram and then maybe I can ex we can practice more on that okay so if I say I can create something like this this is your initial state and I am representing this initial state as Q0. This initial state I am Q0 se represent kar hu, okay? Now, if I give a string here, which is either 0, or if I am giving a 1, then I will go to the state Q1. And again, if I give a 0, or if I give a 1, then I will go to the state Q2. And here I am saying that Q2 is a final state. And again, if I'm giving a 0 or 1, I'm going to the state Q3 and I'm going to loop here on the state Q3. Okay. So, now there are two things, two or three things that you need to understand. First of all, if I say something like this, for example, Qx, it means I'm representing a state. If I'm say, saying something with two circles like this, that means it is representing a final state right if I am representing something like with this that means it is a transition it is a transition if I am representing a state with this arrow in the beginning for example here Q0 is having a beginning arrow which is not from any other arrow so that means it is a initial state so this is your initial state hai. okay so here we have four states abhi kaam kaise karega dekho if i load a string here on this tape agar main is tape ek string ko load karta hu for example the string is 0 and 0 that means after reading the first 0 i'm going to the initial state q0 to one more state which is q1 yani ki aapne pehla 0 padhkar aap q0 se q1 ke paas gaye now after reading this second 0 आपने second zero को read किया, that means you are going to the state from q1 to q2. आप q1 से गए, q2 के पास, और उसके बाद जो string है, वो आपकी finish हो गई, string is finished. So when your string is finished, then you are now at a final state. अब आप एक final state पर हो, that means this is a valid string. इसका मतलब ये जो है, ये एक valid string है, okay? Now if you look at this string which is 0 0 0 So first you have given a 0 diya. So by this 0 you have gone to Q0 state Then you have given a second 0 Then you have given a Q1 state Then you have given a third 0 Then you have given a Q2 state Then you have given a Q3 state 
और उसके बाद स्ट्रिंग फिनिश हो गई तो यानी कि आफ्टर रीडिंग दिस एंटायर स्ट्रिंग यू आर एट अ स्टेट Q3 एंड दिस Q3 थ्री इज नॉट अ फाइनल स्टेट जो Q3 है वो एक फाइनल स्टेट नहीं है दैट मीन्स दिस इज नॉट अ वैलिड स्ट्रिंग ऑफ दिस लैंग्वेज जो स्ट्रिंग है वो इस लैंग्वेज की वैलिड स्ट्रिंग नहीं है ओके तो जो स्ट्रिंग है वो इसकी वैलिड स्ट्रिंग नहीं है इस लैंग्वेज में ओके फाइन सो इफ आई गेव सी आई अंडरस्टूड योर क्वेश्चन माधुरी बट जस्ट फॉलो थ्रू मी यू विल अंडरस्टैंड योर डाउट वेरी इजिली आपका जो डाउट है वो क्लियर हो जाएगा जस्ट फॉलो थ्रू इट गिव इट सम मोर टाइम यू विल अंडरस्टैंड इट ओके नाउ लेट एस अज्यूम दैट वी हैव अ स्ट्रिंग हियर विच इज जीरो वन जीरो जीरो एंड वन नाउ कैन सी दिस स्ट्रिंग ज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन दिस लैंग्वेज एल ये जो स्ट्रिंग है वो इस लैंग्वेज एल में नहीं है हम बट इज द लेंथ ऑफ द स्ट्रिंग इट इज जीरो वन टू थ्री एंड फोर तो स्ट्रिंग की जो लेंथ है वो है फोर एंड दिस लैंग्वेज इज ओनली कंटेनिंग स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ लेंथ टू सो ऑब्वियसली दिस स्ट्रिंग डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट इन दिस लैंग्वेज जो स्ट्रिंग है वो इस लैंग्वेज के अंदर एग्जिस्ट नहीं करती नाउ सबसे पहले हमने सिंबल जीरो को रीड किया दैट मीन्स हम स्टेट क्यू नॉट से लेकर क्यू वन के पास गए फिर हमने सिंबल वन को रीड किया दैट मीन्स हम क्यू वन से लेकर क्यू टू के पास गए फिर हमने सिंबल जीरो को रीड किया फिर यानी कि हम क्यू टू से लेकर क्यू थ्री के पास गए फिर से हमने सिंबल जीरो को रीड किया नॉ क्यू थ्री इज हैविंग अ लूप हियर यानी कि अगर क्यू थ्री पर एक और जीरो आता है तो अगेन हम लोग क्यू थ्री के पास गए फिर हमारे पास वन आया तो अगेन हम लोग क्यू थ्री के पास गए सो बेसिकली क्यू थ्री इज हैविंग अ लूप राइट सो हियर यू कैन क्लियरली सी दैट If we have a string whose length is more than six, whose length is more than seven, whose length is more than eight, still this diagram, or can this finite state diagram will be able to hold that string also, right? So, this diagram I am calling this diagram as a finite state diagram. This diagram we will call finite state diagram. Why? because the number of states in this diagram is finite you do not have infinite number of states you only have finite number of states how many states are there there are total four states okay so this kind of diagram is called as a diagram of a finite machine it is representing a finite automata so machine means automata it is representing a finite automata and this is the diagram of a machine or you can say it is kind of a block diagram jo ki machine ko represent karta hai is it clear a uh, pratibha if we have a de deterministic finite automata then we have to handle all transitions agar aapke paas deterministic finite automata hai to us case mein aapko sabhi transitions ko handle karna padta hai if you have a non deterministic finite automata then maybe you can miss some of the transition us case mein aap kuch transition ko bhi miss kar payenge You will understand it more clearly, okay? So just note it down and write down in the chat window. This note will be done after the chat window. Be done, sorry. Write it, write it, please. I will tell everything step by step. Just follow through the lectures. I will tell what is the book you can follow. I will tell lot of things, but. step by step okay so i've shown you one model of a machine now we can have different models of machine so let me just show you some example we have different models of machines okay so the first model is the model of a finite automata finite automata so in a finite automata you have a tape here this is a tape where you can load your string you have a finite control and you have a finite memory this memory is finite so if we have a machine like this then we call it as a finite automata to hum usko bolenge finite automata second push down automata so in a push down automata we replace this finite memory with the help of a stack so we have a tape like this where you can load all the symbols 
and this is your finite control and with this finite control we have a stack and you know the working of a stack stack can go in one direction and this is an infinite stack that means you can store infinite amount of string here okay so you have a stack in there up infinite amount of string or store cursor okay so you know how the stack work we have a push operation we have a pop operation and so on so if you in the finite automata if you change this finite memory with the stack then this will call as a this will be called as a push down automata so in that case push down automata the third one here is a turing machine turing machine so again with this turing machine we do not uh, really have an infinite memory so it is same like a finite automata same like finite automata but slight difference so this is a tape this is your finite control and here again we have a finite memory and here this special functionality here in a Turing machine what is the functionality so look at it carefully in a finite automata this this read write head this is a read write head it can go only in one direction yes if a key direction mein ja sakta, only in one direction and secondly it is just a read head it is not a write head so it is just going to read the data from the tape it is not going to write the data on the tape in a push down automata again it is just a read head and it can only go in one direction okay so theoretically we call it as a read write head but practically when we create when we solve problems so in 99.99 percent of the problems we say this is only going to read the data from the tape so maybe there are some model existing where this can also write but they are not of our use hum log unko study nahi karenge. there are some research papers also but they are not of our use whatsoever so for our case for our purpose this finite automata can only read the data from the tape this can only read the data from the tape and this can only go move in one direction if a key direction ki taraf move karega this cannot move in more than one directions now in case of a turing machine this is special case where because this is a read write head this can read as well as this can also write on the tape and secondly it can go in both the directions ye dono directions mein ja sakta hai. both the directions it can go okay and third we consider that this tape is an infinite tape that means it can go in the left direction as much as it want it can go in the right direction as much as it want there's no limitations whatsoever it can go up to any amount ye kitna bhi left ya right direction mein ja sakta hai. okay now the fourth one here will be called as your linear bound automata The fourth one will be linear bound automata. So in a linear bound automata in a Turing machine, there's a very, very slight difference. So what is the difference? So this is a tape again. This is your finite control. And this is your finite memory. Okay. And this finite control can go in both the direction this read write head can go in both the right direction it can read as well as it can also write but the difference is here in this turing machine it can also go beyond the string i mean to say let us assume that you have a string a b a this is the string so it can go any amount of any amount of spaces here it can also go any amount of spaces here it is not confined with what is the length of the string but in a linear bound automata if this is a string which is a b a the limitation is this this read write head can go between these two lines it cannot go beyond this ye jo hai wo isse beyond nahi ja sakta but here it can go any amount of space beyond these values okay so huge difference is there in linear bound automata okay so in case of Turing machine, there are a lot of variations of Turing machines like there are 36, 37 different variations of Turing machine in your syllabus. But again, uh, 
in examples in real world theoretical purpose there are huge number of variations of Turing machines and we do not really have to study all those variations so here we are just going to see what are the variations of Turing machine and what are the capabilities but again Turing machine is the most powerful machine that is possible and that is known to human till now okay till now no one is able to propose a machine which is more powerful than your Turing machine koi bhi Turing machines are the powerful machines ko propose nahi kar paya hai so in our syllabus, we'll be studying these four machines in complete details. First of all, I'm going to study finite automata. Then we are going to study Turing machines, uh, push down automata. Then we are going to study the Turing machines. And then we are going to study the linear bound automata. Okay. Now you can also ask me, sir, which of these machines is more powerful? And why do we study all of these machines? How many study machines ko padh kyo rahe Or isme se jo machines hai, kaun si machine zyada powerful hai? So you can ask me this question. Now you can see that first you have this finite automata. Then this push down automata is more powerful than the finite automata. And then this Turing machine is more powerful or you can say this linear bound automata is more powerful than push down automata. And after this you have the Turing machine which is the most powerful machine out of all of them. Turing machine jo hai in sabse zada powerful hai. And what do you mean by this power? Is power ka matlab kya? What do you mean by this power? The power means the capability of solving a problem. So it means this push down automata can solve more problems as compared to the finite automata. And this linear bound automata can solve more problems as compared to push down automata and this Turing machine can solve more problems as compared to linear bound automata so sabse zyada jo problems hai wo Turing machine solve kar sakta hai as compared to any other machine to jitni bhi machine hai un sabse zyada jo problems hai wo Turing machine hi solve kar sakta hai okay so now what we have to do is first of all we'll study this mathematical model this is finite automata is a mathematical model So all of them are basically mathematical model. So we'll start with the finite automata. And there are two variations of finite automata, which is deterministic finite automata, as well as we have a non-deterministic finite automata. Again, for push down automata, we have two variations. The first one is your deterministic. And second one is non-deterministic okay so we'll be studying both finite and pda in complete thorough details because 1980 or you can say 85 percent of your question in your examination they will come from finite automata and push on automata only aapke 80 85 percent of questions exam mein wo sirf finite automata or push down automata mein se hi aayenge now rest your 5 to 10 percent of your questions they will come from Turing machine 5 to 10 percent of your questions they will come from Turing machine or you can say 5 I would say why because next 5 percent you can expect from decidability and computability so 5 percent questions will come from Turing machine and again the Turing machine is of uh, type which is deterministic it is also non-deterministic but we do not really study non-deterministic here because deterministic Turing machine is equivalent to as power to non-deterministic so here we are only going to study deterministic Turing machines and then we have linear bound automata and you can see that in your examination you will be having 0% questions from linear bound automata nobody really asks any questions on LBA and LBA is not even in our syllabus whatsoever in that sense Nobody asks questions from LBA, they only ask questions from finite, push down, and Turing machines. Okay, so that was uh, okay. I think you have written it. Let me give you one more overview of the subject. So, this is a basically an introduction lecture, lecture. So, what are the things that we are going to study? Let me tell you something else as an overview. Just write it down, write it down in the chat window, then I can rub it. So in our syllabus, we are going to start with the finite automata only. So in the next lecture, I'm going to start with the finite automata. But before that, let me give you one more overview. Those who are online, uh, please say hi again in the chat window. Those who are students online, hai, those who are watching the live streaming, please say hi in the chat window. Because I should know how many students are active and how many are not active. Come on, fast, 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 fast. Everyone, please say hi 
in the chat window. Good, 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 good. Now see, there's one more overview. As I told you that uh, initially I'm going to study something about finite automatas. So there are two types of finite automatas. One is your deterministic finite automata and second one is your non-deterministic finite automatas. Okay. So let me show it this way that this is the set of all finite automatas. Ye jitne bhi finite automatas exist karte hai, this is the set of all those finite automatas. Okay. Then if this is the set of all those finite automatas, so this set contains two sets. One is your deterministic finite automata, second is non-deterministic. Then this will be the set of all deterministic push down deterministic push down automata okay and then this is a set of all non-deterministic push down automata so you can write the uh, write their full forms also because these full forms are important okay so we are going to study each of these things in a lot of details in our subject so these full forms are equally important here so we have finite automata again there are two types of finite automata which is deterministic finite automata as well as non-deterministic but actually deterministic finite automata is equivalent to power to non-deterministic finite automata both are equivalent in power right so you'll understand what is the equivalence of power later on then we can say deterministic Poisson automata these deterministic Poisson automata are more powerful than finite automata and when I say more powerful iska powerful ka meaning ke, what do I mean by powerful when I say powerful it means this is having more capability of solving a problem so if we can propose a model which is more uh, which can solve more problems which this cannot solve we can say it is more powerful for example deterministic Poisson automata can solve more problems as compared to the finite automata that is why we can say deterministic push on automata is more powerful as compared to the finite automata okay and then non-deterministic push on automata is again more powerful as compared to deterministic push on automata you say is other powerful here and then we are going to study something called as linear bound automatas so linear bound automata is much more powerful as compared to non-deterministic push on automata and then we have Turing machines so we have Turing machines so there are two variations of Turing machines one is your halting Turing machine and second one we can say it is a it is just a Turing machine fine so again Turing machine and halting Turing machine don't know case may we cannot prove which one is more powerful so we have proved nahi kar sakte, but just imagine here that uh, we can say there are more Turing machines as compared to halting Turing machines. So I'm just rep representing it here like this, but because I have to represent a few languages also. So here uh, nobody really knows that the Turing machine is more powerful or halting Turing machine is more powerful. Okay. Now the languages which are accepted by finite automata, the finite automata jin language ko accept karte hai, these languages are called as regular language these languages are called as regular languages or you can say you can only create finite automatas for regular languages aap sirf regular languages ke liye hi finite automata bana sakte hain if a language is not regular then you cannot create a finite automata for this if i say we can create a deterministic push on automata that means we can call it as a deterministic context free language for deterministic push down automata you can create deterministic context free language if we can create a non deterministic push down automata then we can simply call it as a context free language or you can say the language is accepted by context free uh, non deterministic push down automata is context free so we will understand all these things later on we will study all these things and study all these but right now just keep it as an introduction make this diagram introduction ki se isko lo, and then we are going to study each of these things in more details in the upcoming lectures okay so for a non-deterministic Poisson automata the language is accepted by them is context free language right so here you can see this deterministic context free language it is a bigger set as compared to regular language that means every regular language is also deterministic context free and every deterministic context free is also context free 
ओके okay? इसका मतलब क्या है इट मीन्स नॉन डिटर्मिस्टिक पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा और सिंपली यू कैन कॉल इट एज ए पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा कंटेन्स डिटर्मिस्टिक एज वेल एज नॉन डिटर्मिस्टिक सो सिंपली यू कैन से पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा कैन एक्सेप्ट अ कॉन्टेक्स फ्री लैंग्वेज एज वेल एज इट कैन ऑल्सो एक्सेप्ट अ रेगुलर लैंग्वेज सो पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा इज मोर पावरफुल एज कंपेयर टू योर फाइनेट ऑटोमेटाज ओके सो वेन आई से पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा इट मीन्स पी डी ए इट मीन्स इट कैन बी डिटर्मिस्टिक पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा एज वेल एज इट कैन ऑल्सो भी नॉन डिटर्मिस्टिक पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा सो मैं दोनों को एक साथ इंक्लूड करके आई कैन जस्ट से इट इज अ पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटा ओके एंड देन द लैंग्वेज इज एक्सेप्टेड बाय द लीनियर बाउंड ऑटोमेटाज देन दीज लैंग्वेजेस आर कॉल्ड एज कॉन्टेक्सट सेंसिटिव लैंग्वेज जो लीनियर बाउंड ऑटोमेटा जिन लैंग्वेजेस को एक्सेप्ट करते हैं उन लैंग्वेजेस को हम बोलते हैं कॉन्टेक्सट सेंसिटिव लैंग्वेज ओके and the languages accepted by these halting tuning machines these languages are called as recursive languages they are called as recursive languages okay and the languages which are accepted by tuning machines these languages are called as recursively enumerable languages so it means what do i mean to say by this is every regular language is also a context free language every context free language is also a context sensitive language every context sensitive language is also a recursive language and every recursive language is also recursively enumerable language but every recursively enumerable language is not recursive every recursive language is not context sensitive every context sensitive is not context free every context free language is not context uh, डिटर्मिस्टिक कॉन्टेक्स फ्री एंड एवरी कॉन्टेक्स फ्री लैंग्वेज इज नॉट रेगुलर तो यहाँ पर वी हैव अ बिगर सेट एंड वी ऑल्सो हैव अ स्मॉलर सेट तो दीज आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ सेट हेयर ओके नाउ दर समथिंग कॉल्ड एज अ ग्रामर तो यहाँ पर हमारे पास क्या वी हैव सीन दिस इज एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ऑल द मशीन्स दिस इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ऑल द लैंग्वेजेस नाउ वी हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज अ ग्रामर सो अगेन वी हैव फोर टाइप्स ऑफ ग्रामर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव अ टाइप थ्री ग्रामर Which is also called as a regular grammar. Which is also called as a regular grammar. Okay. So this is for regular languages. We can create the regular grammars. Then we have type two grammars, which is also called as context-free grammars. We have a context-free grammars. Okay. Then. so context free grammars you can create for context free languages if a language is context free whether it is a con deterministic context free or whether it is a context free we can create a context free grammar again there are more partitions like deterministic context free grammar or con just context free grammar wo hum log later on discuss karenge right for context sensitive languages we have type 1 grammar and type 1 means it is context sensitive grammar we have context sensitive grammar and then for recursively enumerable languages we have type 0 grammar and this type 0 grammar is also called as unrestricted grammar i hope this everything is visible just let me have a look i think yes it is everything is visible fine so it what do i mean to say by this is every type 3 grammar is also type 2 yani ki jitni bhi regular grammar hai all these regular grammars are also context free grammar every type 2 grammar is also type 1 that means all context free grammar is also context sensitive every type 1 grammar is also type 0 grammar that means all context sensitive grammar is also unrestricted unrestricted grammar but every unrestricted grammar is not context sensitive grammar every context sensitive grammar is not context free grammar and every context free grammar is also not regular grammar so sabhi context free grammar jo hai wo regular nahi hai okay now what we are going to study in this subject hum kis tarike se follow karenge how we are going to follow all these topics in this subject so my first aim here it is to spend approx 40% of the entire subject time to make you understand finite automatas 
सो पूरा सब्जेक्ट जितना होगा इफ आई से आई कैन फिनिश दिस एंटायर सब्जेक्ट इन टेन आवर्स देन आई एम गोइंग टू स्पेंड फोर आवर्स जस्ट इन फाइन एट ऑटोमेटर्स इफ आई से द सब्जेक्ट इज फोर्टी आवर्स सो आउट ऑफ दोज फोर्टी आवर्स आई एम गोइंग टू स्पेंड ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स जस्ट इन फाइन एट ऑटोमेटर्स ओके बिकॉज इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस फाइन एट ऑटोमेटर्स देन ओनली ट्वेंटी थर्टी परसेंट टाइम्स ट्वेंटी परसेंट टाइम इज रिक्वायर्ड टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल ऑफ दम इफ यू अंडरस्टूड दिस ट्वेंटी परसेंट टाइम्स रिक्वायर्ड टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल ऑफ दम and 10% time time or 5% time is required to understand all of them and rest 40% of your time is required to practice and understand all of them or, or you can say 30% here and last 10% will be to understand your computability and decidability problems okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three things will really help you in your exam okay so understanding these three and after this we are going to cover this push down automatas so second topic will be your push down automatas which include both deterministic as well as non deterministic okay so we are going to study this both push down deterministic and push uh, non deterministic second topic that will be your second chapter so as most of you asked me sir how how long will uh, what will be the chapter or what are the books i'm going to tell everything so just follow through this to so, pehla jo aapka topic hai the first topic is your find automata second topic will be your push down automata which include both deterministic as well as non deterministic and after studying both of these topics we'll be studying this as a third topic which is difference between regular languages and context free language so this entire will be this entire topic language regular plus context free will be your third topic because uh, if you understood the difference between finite and deterministic push down automata and finite automata then you can easily understand within 5 minutes what is the difference between regular languages and context free languages and then you will be having the third topic and your third topic will be your grammar so so it is your fourth topic which will be your grammars so i'm going to make you understand the difference between regular grammar context free grammar context sensitive grammar and unrestricted grammar we'll try and make understand the difference between all of them then your fifth topic will be to understand your turing machines so turing machines as i said it is of two types one is your halting turing machine then is your uh, just turing machines which might not be halting so this will be your fifth topic and after this fifth topic i'm going to cover what is the difference between recursive languages and recursively enumerable language because if you can create for a language if you can create a halting turing machine then we call that language as recursive if for a language you can create a turing machine that means we call that language as recursively enumerable so that means every recursive language is recursively enumerable but every halting every turing machine halting turing machine is a turing machine but every turing machine might not be halting तो यहाँ पर अगर आप थोड़ा ध्यान से देखेंगे लुक एट दिस थिंग हियर सो इफ यू लुक एट इट हियर यू विल अंडरस्टैंड देखो मैं इसको फिर से एक बार प्रॉपरली समझा देता हूँ यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ फॉर अ लैंग्वेज यू कैन क्रिएट अ फाइन ऑटोमेटा देन वी कॉल दैट रैंग लैंग्वेज एज रेगुलर अगर किसी लैंग्वेज के लिए आप फाइन ऑटोमेटा बना सकते हैं देन वी कॉल दैट लैंग्वेज एज रेगुलर If for a language we can create a push down automata, then we can say that language is context free. If for a language we can create a Turing machine, then we can say that language is recursively enumerable. If for a language we can create a halting Turing machine, then we say the language is recursive. If for a language we can create a linear bound automata, then we say that language is context sensitive. So these things I'm going to study. So. your turing machine will be your fifth topic right and then your uh, this uh, recursive and recursively enumerable languages both of them will be a part of turing machine only and then your sixth topic here in the subject is going to be your decidability and computability i'm going to take decidability and computability as your sixth topic now 40% time will be for finite automata right and then you are having 20% time will be given to push down automatas linear bound automatas turing machines and then you can see 10% times or 5% time will be given to the grammar 5 to 10% and last 5% time will be given to decidability and computability and this is how much time you are going to require so entire subject is approximately 40 hours but uh, i'm going to cover here in these classes this entire subject roughly in 30 hours 30 27 30 se lekar 30 hours hame lagenge so i'm going to cover this entire subject in 27 to 30 hours 
and the books that you can refer for this subject is Peter Lynch for competitive exam Peter Lynch is the best book but I feel most of the students will not be able to understand from the Peter Lynch so the examples that I refer for the subject are from the book Puntam Baker so you can uh, study this Indian author book Puntam Baker or you can see there's uh, one more book uh, many books I guess uh, um, I'm not remembering the name I'll tell you the names also but uh, if you can understand Peter Lynch that is more than enough good good enough but again again if you do not understand then Puntam Baker you can refer it is a very very easy language book okay and this is how we are going to follow all of these topics any doubts so just search Puntam Baker yes KLP Mishra you can refer so KLP Mishra is a good book so you can refer it Puntam Baker also you can refer good I believe no questions so now we can start our first chapter here because this was an introduction chapter so in the introduction chapter I just covered the overview of the subject in subject we are going to study the things that we are going to study now your first chapter is your deterministic finite automata so we will stop the class here and then after the break we will have a break of uh, roughly half an hour to one hour a ghanta break hoga so after this break we'll again continue i think the time is 1 30 so we will continue by 1 uh, 2 pm so we 2 pm pe continue karenge it will not be very very long break half an hour break will be there so zyada lamba nahi rahega at 2 pm we will start and uh, at 2 pm we will start with the first chapter which is finite automata okay so till then have din have your lunch and then we will meet again so it is 1 30 have your lunch and 2 pm we will start again okay which will be your first chapter which is finite automata i hope you enjoyed this session so let's meet in the next session